six NS two, long division using the standard algorithm. All right. So when we solve division problems, uh, some of us have learned how to use partial products. Some of us have learned to use guess and check. We are going to work on using our standard algorithm of long division. All right. So when we're done with this, we should be close to or able to do long division. First and foremost, I have to know my parts of long division. So the dividend, and this is all division, I just apologize, it shouldn't just be long division. The dividend is the number that is being divided. It's what's being split up into groups or into pieces. So the dividend is the quantity, be, quantity being divided, while the divisor is the quantity doing the devising. Okay, that, or, and I don't want to say or, but that er at the end, so this sound right here. That should be your reminder. That should be your key that it is doing the dividing. Look at it this way. A runner runs. A baker bakes. A teacher teaches. Okay, that er at the end is your doing. It's your verb. Okay, so the divisor is doing the dividing. So if I say 40 divided by 8, that's saying that Eight is the one that's doing the dividing. So eight is my divisor. All right, and then we've discussed it before, but it is always good to remind you that you also have the quotient. And the quotient is the answer to that division problem. And as we work out the problem, we will show you where that is found. All right, and we also have the remainder in a division problem. The remainder is what's left over. Will there always be a remainder? No, sometimes that remainder will be zero, so it's non-existent. Sometimes there will be. All right, so biggest part of long division is making sure that we set it up correctly. So we talked about the dividend and the divisor. It's important to remember that the divisor goes on the outside and the dividend goes on the inside. So look at it this way. When you're setting up your problem, your problem has to end with the dividend. So you write your divisor, then you write your dividend. Okay, so this is 4,214 divided by 14. So I know that 14 is my divisor, because divided by, so 14 is doing the dividing. And then I know that 4,214 is what's being divided, so it is the dividend. So when I write this out, I am actually going to write it out in these colors, but I'm going to first draw my long division symbol, which is just half of a box or half of a rectangle. Then I'm going to use my colors. So my divisor goes on the outside, which is 14. And then my dividend goes on the inside, which is 4,214. And I notice now that I wrote those backwards in terms of color. So 4,214. And then go ahead and erase that and put it in the correct color. There we go. All right. Now from here on out, we're just going to work in black. So when we do long division, it is really important to make sure that our numbers on the top of the long division problem line up appropriately or correctly. If they don't, when we start to do division with decimals, we're going to find that our answers are coming out incorrectly because our decimal could be in the wrong spot. The other reason is sometimes we end up, our numbers get shifted, and so we forget to bring a number down, we forget what number we use, and it becomes a big, big problem, and it gets really frustrating, and we don't want that. So everybody inside the long division symbol is at the party. So they each need their own chair. So four gets a chair, two gets a chair, one gets a chair, and four gets a chair. Now I have to go through and I have to do my process. And this is going to sound sunny, funny, but I always remind myself that dirty monkeys, they smell bad. Dirty monkeys smell bad. The reason I have this sentence, divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. 
So what I'm doing is I'm looking and I'm saying, okay, I have inside of here, I have four pieces to start with. I need 14 to make a whole group. Can I make a whole group with 14? No. So nothing can go into that box. Now I can look at 42. I could say, well, what's 42 divided by 14? Or I can think of it as, how many groups of 14 can I make with 42 pieces? Let's say I know, oh, you know what? Two. Two sounds good. That should work. And I know that 14 times 2 is 28. So now I do 2 times 14 is 28. I subtract. So I'm down to subtraction. And now here I have 12 minus 8 is 4. 3 minus 2 is 1. But look at here. I had 14 left. If the number I get when I subtract is equal to or larger than my divisor, that means I could have made another group, which means I need to change my numbers. So that means I need to change this number up here, up top, because I can make more than two groups. I can actually make, I have 14 more here, so I can make another group. So in this case, it's not two groups of 14 that I can make. It's actually three. And it's okay. That's why we have these beautiful things called erasers. The other thing you can do is off to the side, you can do 14 times 3 if you're not sure, and double check. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 1, or add the 1 up top. 1 times 3 is 3, plus 1 is 4. So I did get 42. I subtract and I have 0. Okay, I don't stop just because I got to, to 0. I still have to work with the rest of the numbers. Here, I have to bring down the 1. So now I've brought down, and now I have to go back up to my second, or back up to the division. How many times does 14 go into 1? Well, it can't. So we do have to put a 0 there. We can't put an X because it's inside the number. We have to put a 0. And we still have to go through our process. So we are going to multiply. 0 times 14 is 0. And then I'm going to subtract, and I get 1. Now I'm going to bring down the 4. Now I go through my process again. How many times can 14 go into 14? Once. 14 times 1 is 14. I subtract, and I have nothing left to bring down. And I have a remainder of 0. So my answer is 301. Now, let's say that I hadn't done that. Let's say that I had said, oh, 14 can't, one, you know, 14 can't go into 1. So I'm just going to not put this 0, and I'm going to put a 1 right here. And then I wouldn't have done this. So now all of a sudden my answer would have been 31. That's a lot different than 301. So we really have to take our time and make sure that we are putting our numbers in the right place. All right, so let me go back. I'm actually going to... Erase just so that way when you go back and look at it, you're not like, wait a minute, why did she cut that out? I didn't. Just wanted to make sure you understood why it's so important to follow through all of your steps and why it's so important to have your work lined up correctly. All right, so what I want you to do for this next one is I would like you to try to set it up on your own. Uh, if you'd like to go through and try to solve it by yourself and then come back and check your work, you can do that as well. But go ahead and pause to set it up and then come back and check your setup. All right, so what you should have found is that 42 is your divisor, so it should have gone on the outside. And you should have had 126 on the inside. And then the next thing you were going to do was set up a chair for everybody at your party. 42 cannot go into 1 and it cannot go into 12. So here we have a little bit tr uh, of a more tricky time because we have to figure out exactly what number does, for, you know, how many times does 42 go into 126? Exactly what number will work? So we might have to guess and check. You cannot put anything bigger than a single digit number in that box. So if you say 10, that won't work. You have to have something that is zero through nine. So if I'm not sure, Sometimes I just start with five. It's halfway in between. 
So four times two is 10, or I'm sorry, five times two is 10, carry the one. Four times five is 20, plus one is 21. That's 210, that is way, way bigger. So that is going to be way too much. So that doesn't work. So I'm gonna try something smaller. What if I try, and I know if I do 42 times two, that's pretty easy to look at and say, well, two times two is four and four times two is eight. That's only 84. So that's gonna be too small, so let's try three. Two times three is six, four times three is 12. So it is exactly three. Three times 42 is 126 with zero left over. So sometimes it's just a matter of practicing with our multiplication. Another way that you could have done this is you could have looked and said, okay, well, how much do, what do I need to multiply two by to get six? And I know that it's three, so that can kind of get you on track as well. It might not be exactly right, but it can start pointing you in the correct direction. The biggest thing that I want to key you in on is making sure to put those zeros in there when you are doing your division, when you need to. Don't skip them, don't forget them, and to go slow. If it helps you, write down your little acronym or just write down D M S B and put the symbols next to it if it helps. Because one of the other things that students forget to do a lot is they forget to bring down that next number or they bring down two at a time. You can only bring down one at a time. So what I'm going to ask you to do is I'm going to ask you to set up these problems and solve them on your own. And then we will go ahead and give the answers in class and discuss other problems. And if you have any questions, you can write them down, email me, or ask them during class.